In today's video, I'm gonna share my five door knocking secrets that allows me to go out, feel super comfortable when I door knock, do a ton of business, and even door knock and go straight to listing houses for sale. I've done this over and over again. It's all practical, none of it's theoretical. I can't wait, so let's jump right in. Number one, start with your neighborhood where you live. The reason this is such a great secret is because a lot of us are uncomfortable when we're door knocking. And even if you're comfortable, if you have not knocked your own neighborhood, you're making a huge mistake. Here's why. When I first started in real estate, I would go out and just knock on my neighbor's doors because I didn't know how else to generate business immediately. And I was amazed that I was now in a business within real estate where I could literally knock on a potential customer's door or someone who might know a potential customer because everybody that I'm knocking on owns a house and they're all going to move at some point. And if I just build a relationship, nurture it, demonstrate expertise, I'm going to get the business. So here's what I would say when I would knock on the door. I'd knock, they'd step out. None of these people knew who I was yet. And I'd say, hey, my name's Jake. I actually live over over here at 4031 Highland Park Drive. And I just wanted to come introduce myself and say, hey, because I'm also in real estate and uh, I thought it'd be a fantastic excuse to come out and meet my neighbors. And a lot of people right away were like, oh, which house is yours? And I'm looking down at my house, I'm pointing out where it is. And it was a great excuse for me to have a good reason to come knock on someone's door. And by telling them right away that I was their neighbor, they're gonna be way nicer to me. They're gonna know that they don't wanna say anything mean or be rude or just shut the door in my face because I'm one of their neighbors and it also put me on a level playing field with them. Oftentimes when you go door knock, people don't really know who you are. They don't know where you're from. They don't know if you've got a good reason to be door knocking the neighborhood. But when you say that you live there, now I'm on the same level with them. I own a house where you own a house. We're one and the same. We drive down the same streets and that gives a ton of credibility. And because I also did happen to live in a neighborhood where, you know, I owned a million dollar house that was a nice house in a nice neighborhood. It gave me the ability to have some credibility right away as well when I was door knocking. So go door knock your own neighborhood, meet all your neighbors, let them know you see your face, and you'll be amazed how many great conversations will come out of that. The second thing you want to do when you're door knocking is dress well. I mean, wear a suit, look the part, be prepared, well put together, don't wear ratty shoes, like wear a nice pair of shoes, have nice socks on, get dressed, go out and door knock. When I first started door knocking, I actually did it in the winter. So I had a coat on over top, I had a suit on underneath, I was very cold, I would even bring a coffee with me. But because I was at their door knocking, people felt sympathy. They were like, come on in, inviting me in, being very kind. So when you door knock, go look the part and look nice. Because if you're a door knocking and you're wearing a suit, people are going to treat it quite a bit different. And they're going to really pay attention and go, why is this person wearing a nice suit at my house? And then the fact that I'm well dressed gives them the confidence that the person they're speaking with is going to be worth their time because it shows that I took the time to put myself together before I came out of knocking your door. So dress nice and watch how much that influence is the conversations. The third thing I want you to do when you door knock is bring door hangers. This is so obvious and I know you might be like, Jake, so far you've told me to door knock my own neighborhood, dress for success and have door hangers. But listen, when you have your door hanger, I want you to really think about what the value proposition is on that door hanger. You could say something like free home evaluation, which a lot of people do, or you could say something like get a custom market report of this neighborhood right here. And then you could offer something like that where people can go to your website, scan a QR code, enter in their home address and not just get their home evaluation, but get updates on the neighborhood. So think about the door hanger strategically, make sure your face your name, your phone number, your email is on that door hanger. Make it as easy as possible. I have 100% gotten business by leaving door hangers behind. I've had elderly people call me and say, hey, I wanted to give you a shot. You left the door hanger here. Wasn't sure what's my place worth. Come and tell me. People are curious. And at the very least, they'd love to know what their house is worth. So by you doing that exercise of leaving something behind for them, it's a great way. And it's so much better than business cards. I used to just like stick business cards in doors and leave them behind. But by having a door hanger, when you walk down that street, read after and you can see that the people that didn't answer you had a door hanger it's awesome it feels like you actually made tons of progress and you're leaving something behind to make sure that those people that didn't answer have a way to get in touch with you and you'll be amazed how much just these little things of like door hangers your photo on it talking about something you're adding for value will make a big difference now number five is my absolute favorite and it's all about going above and beyond for the people whose doors you're knocking on and the way that you do this is really simple when you go and knock on people's doors you want to make sure that you're 
you're thinking upfront about how you're going to add value to them. So what you can do is you could prepare in advance a market report of everything that's sold in the area. You could physically have copies of it and you could say, hey, I wanted to leave this with you and have your business card stapled to it. Or you could say, hey, I've put together a market report of everything that's sold in the last few months. Uh, it's got updates on, you know, values of houses based on price per square foot. It's going to give you a really good idea. Would you be okay if I sent you an email with that information? Or better yet, would it be helpful or would you like to see some of that information? Ask them a question that's, you know, would it be easy for you if I just sent that over to you? Would it be helpful for you? Would you like to see that? Things where people are a little more awkward to say no thank you. And then you can provide them that resource and be able to email them, grab their info. And when you pull out your phone and you ask for their information, look down at your phone the whole time and say, great, first name, last name, phone, email, and don't look up. Just fill it all in, get it all done. I will even shift my phone toward them so that they can see the information as I'm entering it in. And it's also disarming because they don't know, you know, if I'm looking at my phone like this, looking at them, it can be a little intimidating. So I will show people my phone. And here's a little bonus tip. When you knock on people's doors, always turn your body to the right so that you're not facing square shoulders to their door. So face your body to the right. I like to have my phone in my hands, usually because I'm actually trying to get messages or things done in between or making notes on the last house that I was at. And then I'll turn it so that they can kind of see my phone and I want them to be able to see both my hands. The psychology behind this is that if someone knocks on your door and they're staring straight at you, shoulders facing you, it's intimidating and threatening. And if their hands are in their pockets, it's even worse. Talk about scary, right? Someone's knocking on your door. They got their hands in their pocket. They're a foot away from the door. So I will always knock on the door. I'll take a couple steps back so that I'm like not, not in an intimidating distance away. I'll get further away. Then I'll pull my phone out, both my hands there. The reason I'm facing to the side is I don't want to appear aggressive. And I also want to seem kind of casual and nonchalant so that when they answer the door, I'll say, hey, uh, my name's Jake. And then I'll carry on with whatever the introduction is, whether it's we've just listed a house in your neighborhood, I wanted to give you an update and start the conversation from there. Now, bonus tip section of dialogue and how do I actually have conversations? I gave you the fact that at the end of the day, you want to make sure you go door knock your own neighborhood. You want to make sure that you're bringing in value. You're dressed well, you've got a door hanger, but how do you actually have conversations? So here's what I've observed with knocking on doors. Number one, the more you do it, you're going to get comfortable and you're going to figure out the things you like to say things you don't like to say, the things that go well, the things that don't. You're going to get your own little sense of humor going, whatever. So I highly recommend you take the time to just go do it and fail through it. You're going to be awful at first, which is why doing your own neighborhood is such a stress reliever. But now that we're actually talking conversations, here's a few great things you can use. Number one, when I knock on the door and someone answers and I'm facing to the side, I always crack a joke about, hey, my name's Jake Nicole. I know I probably look like I'm a Jehovah's Witness dressed like this, but I'm not. I'm like the second worst thing thing, which is I'm a real estate agent. And uh, I actually just wanted to come say, hey, and I'll usually pause for a second there because I'll laugh or something. And then I'll say, yeah, I actually just wanted to come by and say, hey, because we're coming to meet neighbors in this neighborhood. I actually live here in the neighborhood. I live like a couple blocks away at 26 Charter House. And I'll say my address because guess what? I know where they live now. The least I can do is tell them where I live and it disarms them a little bit. And that's a secret in real estate in general is when you want someone to share information, you just share personal information first and they'll be more likely to share. So I'll say I live in the neighborhood or we just listed a house in the neighborhood or this is a neighborhood that we're looking to build some more connections and relationships in. Hey, how long have you lived here in the neighborhood for? I'm not asking them if they want to sell their house. I'm not asking them if, if they want a home evaluation. I want to ask them if they want anything yet. I just want to get to know them a little bit. So I'll say, hey, how long have you been in the neighborhood for? And because I'm calm, relaxed, and I'm at the point now with door knocking where I'm really comfortable, people open up a whole lot faster and they're generally really nice. I've noticed when I've gone with other team members who are maybe just a little bit more antsy and stressed out, I'm talking fast. It's YouTube. I got to get this across to you. But in general, when I knock on doors, I try and slow down a little bit and I'll say, Hey, how long have you lived in the neighborhood for? Because I want to be approachable. I want to be calm, cool, collected. And a really useful frame of mind is I'm also at the point in my career where I know that I make a lot of money selling real estate. So I feel like I can stand my ground and have a good reason to talk to anybody because I'm like, Hey, I, I make a ton of money. I sell a lot of houses. You can trust that what I'm telling you is going to be 
useful and that I also have the track record to back it and currently where I'm at in my life is financially stable so I don't have to get your business right now. I'm not needy, I'm very secured and relaxed and that's a huge frame of reference that allows me to knock on someone's door and feel very calm and relaxed and think I belong right here knocking on your door. So when I knock on their door, we have this little bit of dialogue, hey, how long have you lived here for? They'll say, uh, oh, I've lived here X amount of time and I'll be like, that's awesome. Like you love in the neighborhood, you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really enjoy it. That's great. And I'll be like, awesome. Well, good to hear. You have no plans on moving, right? And I'll put that out there. I'll put my hands up. Even when I say it, I'll say, hey, you got no plans on moving, right? And they'll say, no, 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 absolutely not. We're going to be here. I'm, I'm going to get carried out of here in a wood box, right? I've had an old lady say to me and I'll respond. Perfect. We need good people in the neighborhood. Glad to hear you're not moving. Just wanted to make sure. So good to meet you. Hey, listen, stay in touch. Here's a card. Uh, hope life's treating you great. Whatever. We'll see you around real soon. Cheers, right? Leaving my information, had a good conversation. I checked with them. I will very often have people say to me, uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, maybe not forever. I would stay here forever. Or maybe we are thinking about moving or something that indicates like maybe they're interested or, hey, what do you think my place is worth? Like people will start to open up by you just having conversation. I definitely don't run around I'm thinking I'm going to get everybody's name and email because at this point in my career, I get enough names and emails that I'm like overwhelmed with contact information, which is a good problem to have, but it's a problem. So when I go out, what I'm trying to do is build real relationships. I want the hot sellers, the hot buyers, the people that are ready to go, ready to make decisions. And it's simply a numbers game. I'm trying to knock on enough doors that I find the people on the street that have plans in the next little while. And then if they do, now I'm going to strike a conversation like this where they say, yeah, we're thinking about moving. I would say, why? This is a beautiful neighborhood. Why would you leave? Again, disarming. Not great. Where are you moving to? It's why, why would you leave here? It's beautiful here. Oh, well, you know, we wouldn't move for probably another five years if we we're going to move. Oh, okay. Like, why would you move in five years? What's changing, right? So or what's going to happen in the next five years? And let them tell me the story of what they're considering or what they're thinking. And by having those disarming conversations, it's such a great way for people to open up. So those are a couple of just quick things. Knock on the door facing this way. I say, hey, my name's Jake Nicole. I know I probably look like I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I just wanted to come and introduce myself. I actually live over on, you know, this address and uh, wanted to just say, hey, come to meet you. Um, and then something like that. It's just like a quick introductory thing. And then I'll lead with, how do you like it here in the neighborhood? And they'll share. They'll talk about something related to the neighborhood. Conversation goes on. So it's a really great framework for you to have some of those conversations. But the bigger takeaways that I hope you just had from this little section at the end where we dove into scripts was that it's all about discovering where they're at in the journey, what they're needs and wants are without asking them like, hey, are you thinking about selling? I don't want to ask them that. I want to ask them, you know, hey, like, are you loving it here in the neighborhood? You have no plans on moving, right? Disarming, getting them to calm down and relax so that we can have a conversation and for them to know that I have no interest in selling them anything. Now, last thing I will share is that I have consistently gone out and door knock and got listing appointments. I have literally knocked on someone's door who was like 10 houses down from me that I had never met when I was new to the neighborhood. And this guy said, man, I, I really like you. I'm literally planning on selling my house in the next four days. I think you're the person to sell it. The craziest part is this guy was a real estate agent who is a very successful real estate agent. And he was like, I don't want to sell my own house. I'd love to have you sell my house. The fact you're here in the neighborhood, that's even better. I'm going to be leaving the neighborhood. I would love you to be actually be the person to sell it. Let me give you a call later tonight. Called me later that night. We listed the property within a few days. He'd already done photos, staging and everything. And he was just like, I think you're the person to sell this house. You came out here, you knocked on my door. I love that. That's a true story. Another true story is a house that I've listed right now. I went and knocked on their door and met them. The people across the street, I just listed their house a couple houses down. I met them at a, an event that I threw in the neighborhood after having door knocked so much, met everybody, started hosting events in the neighborhood for Canada Day of all things. So this just goes to show you tons of businesses come out of door knocking. I just did a commercial deal about a month and a half ago from someone I went and knocked on their door. I realized they were a client's dad and we connected. He messaged me literally the same night and said, hey, so great meeting you today. Thanks for coming to knock on my door. What do you think of this commercial property? Two weeks later, we bought it. So I have countless stories of door knocking and how effective it's been, how much it's helped me build my brand and my business. I highly encourage you to do it. People that tell you it doesn't work, they don't know how to do it. They're afraid and embarrassed of doing it. There's nothing wrong with going out, knocking on doors and making tens of thousands of dollars and meeting people while doing it. And yeah, you get the occasional person who's bothered, but most people are absolutely fine with it. So hope you guys love this lesson. If you enjoyed today's video on door knocking, go share this with another real estate agent who you are going to go door knock with. Maybe you're not even in real estate. Maybe you're like in the mortgage broker business and you just want to go meet people, connect, whatever the case may be. Share this video with someone
someone that you want to go do this with say hey check this out let's go try this together let's go fail at this together my team and i we go door knock we will be across the street from one another we'll be laughing at like hilarious conversations we'll be celebrating like that was an awesome one i got a great lead really really cool story there so go get out there do it share this video with that person you want to go do this with and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video jake nicole signing out cheers